Welcome to Golden Software's video training for Surfer. Surfer is a versatile gridding, contouring, and surface mapping software package. In this video, I will explain the Base Symbology feature. Base Symbology is a feature that allows you to create thematic maps. Once you've created a vector base map from an ASCII file like a DAT or XLS file, or from a vector file like a DXF or a shape file, you can apply line, fill, and or symbol properties to the objects in the layer based on those attribute values. To add or edit base symbology objects in a vector base layer, select the base layer in the contents window. On the general page in the properties window, click the edit symbology button in the symbology field. The symbology dialog opens. There are six symbology options, none, unique values, unclassed colors, unclassed symbols, class colors, and class symbols. We will discuss each of these options now. None is the default option. It keeps the unique properties of each object and ignores attribute values. This is helpful for removing other base symbology options in order to reset the object properties to their default properties. Unique values allows you to assign specific properties to objects based on unique attribute values. The attribute field is selected from a list of all attributes for objects in the base layer. When we click the Add All button, all of the unique attributes are added to the values list, along with their line, fill, and symbol properties. We can remove the selected attribute from the list by clicking the Remove button. We can add an attribute to the list by clicking the Add Values button, and we can remove all attributes by clicking the Remove All button. We can edit individual line, fill, and symbol properties by clicking on the appropriate entry in the values list and editing the properties in the pane on the right. Alternatively, we can use Control and or Shift keys to select multiple properties to edit at once. Additionally, we can click the Color Scheme button to open the Color Scheme dialog, where we can choose how the line, fill, symbol line, and symbol fill properties are assigned across all of the attributes. The options are As Is to leave the color and opacity settings as they are currently shown in the values list, Random to randomly assign new color and opacity settings, Fixed to assign a uniform color and opacity, and Color Map to assign a gradient to the colors. Click OK to close this dialog and see the appropriate changes made in the Values list. Click Apply at any time to update the map with the changes being made in the Symbology dialog. If you use the same unique values and properties in multiple projects, save the scheme by clicking the Save button. Apply the scheme to future projects by clicking the Load Values button. At the top on the right are the Sort Method and Show Missing Values options. The Sort Method dictates whether values in the list are displayed in alphabetical order, numeric order, or the same order their objects are listed within the base layer in the Contents window. This is the ordering used in the legend if you have added a legend to the base layer. Show Missing Values determines whether objects without any of the attribute values from the values list are shown in the map. Properties of these objects are set in the Properties window for the object or the base layer. To save the properties for this layer, click OK. Each major road on our map has been highlighted with a different color bold line. To display these in a legend, Click Map Tools, Add to Map, Legend. Since this layer only has lines, we can select the legend, click on the Layers tab in the Properties window, and edit the template to remove the Fill and Symbol entries. This leaves only the line and the value in the legend. The classed and unclassed color options allow you to emulate a choropleth map using raw rather than normalized data. We will apply these symbologies to a new map layer so we don't overwrite the road symbology. 
The Class Colors option allows you to group numeric attribute values into classes, and then color the objects based on the color associated with each class. On the left are the Properties. In the Classes section, we can determine how our attributes are divided into classes, how many classes there are, and whether or not there should be a class encompassing all objects outside of the current range of class values. We can also reverse the color scheme. So in this case, the red color would be for the smallest values and the blue would be for the largest. And we can save the classes to a class file or load a previously saved class file. At the bottom of the properties in the color map section, we can determine whether or not to use a color map to determine the class colors and we can set the color map if we are using one. On the right are the classes. Here we can click in the upper value and or name columns to change the entry. And we can click on a color to change the color and opacity. As you can see here, once we apply the changes, there is no way to tell the difference between values for multiple objects that fall within the same class. That is where the Unclassed Colors option is useful. The Unclassed Colors option allows you to apply a gradient across all of the attribute values, so you should be able to tell the difference between attribute values that would have been binned together using the Classed Colors option. When we click OK, we can see the map update with the new colors. If desired, we can add this new layer to the legend by selecting the legend, clicking the Layers page in the Properties window, clicking Edit List in the Edit Layer List field, and selecting our COPLSS Population Layer, and clicking the right arrow button. When we click OK, we see the layer has been added to the legend. We can edit this new layer by selecting it from the Layers to Edit list and then editing with the properties below. Check the box next to Show Layer Name to add a label using the layer name. The Unclassed and Class Symbols options allow you to add a symbol to each object whose properties are determined by the attribute value. We will add these symbologies to the Income Base layer. The Unclassed Symbols option allows you to size the symbols exactly based on their attribute values and a preset size range. Symbols are the same for all attributes. How the symbols are scaled between the minimum and maximum value size is determined by the scaling method. You can see the symbols appear when we apply the changes. The Class Symbols option allows you to group numeric attribute values into classes, and then display specific symbols at the centroid of objects. The symbol properties are determined by the Class Symbol properties. The Symbol section in the Properties pane defines the symbol size range, the scaling method, and whether or not the symbols are the same for all classes. If the classes are using the same symbol, we can set the symbol in the Symbol property section below. In the Classes section on the right, we can click in the upper value and or name columns to change the entry and we can click on a symbol to change the symbol properties. When we click OK, we can see the symbols adjust. The last option in this base symbology dialog is the pie chart. We'll use the registered vehicles layer for this. To create pie charts from your data, click the pie chart. On the right side of the attributes section, the available attributes are listed. Click the plus sign to add the attribute to the slices section. Change the color of the slices by clicking over the color field. Click apply at any time to view the pie charts. Further customization options are found in the properties section. Click OK when finished. 
Add the pie maps to the legend by selecting the legend and clicking Edit List on the Layers page of the Properties Manager. Select the layer, then click the arrows pointing right to move it to the Selected Layers section. This concludes the video training for the Base Symbology feature in Surfer. If you have any additional questions, please contact Golden Software.